Today, with over 6 million passengers passing through it, Euro Airport Basel Mulhaus Freiburg is the seventh most important French airport. Many professions are known in the aviation field, be it that of pilot, stewardess, or air traffic controller. In a control tower, as in an aircraft, air traffic controllers and pilots are the major actors in aviation safety, which is a very different thing from aviation security. Aviation security, in fact, draws together all the measures taken against intentional malicious acts of terrorism. Conversely, aviation safety represents all measures for reducing the risk of aircraft incident or accident. One of the jobs linked to aviation safety, and less known than that of air traffic controller or pilot, is the ATSEP. ATSEP stands for Air Traffic Safety Electronics Personnel. Its role, as viewed by ICAO, the International Civil Aviation Organization, is to ensure installations, operational management, and the maintenance of systems and equipment involved in air transport safety. By way of an example from France, there are 25 ATSEP in the technical department of Basel Mulhaus Freiburg Airport. Through this example, this short film aims to explain how the technical department supports air traffic management systems and dedicated equipment. In an airport, the Civil Aviation Administration generally is governed by direct state administration or by a company reporting to the ministry responsible for civil aviation. This administration is generally divided into several distinct parts. The first one, the Executive Office, is solely dedicated to administrative functions. It is responsible for governance, strategy, human resources, financial, business, legal and medical affairs. This department may also include other entities, such as an airport engineering department, an information service department, the airport service charges department, which collects landing fees. The second part is the CAA, for Civil Aviation Authority. It is responsible for the supervision of airlines, airports, aircraft manufacturers, air navigation, safety, passenger rights, labour law and international relations. Then there is the NSA, National Supervisory responsible, in particular, for the certification of personnel and oversight activities in the Aviation Safety Framework. This service acts as a supervisory authority. Finally, there is the ANSP for Air Navigation Service Provider. It is responsible for providing all air traffic management services. It operates under the supervision of the NSA. An ANSP might be divided into several entities, such as a technical engineering department, which develops, outsources, installs, deploys and ensures appropriate functioning of all technical means for air navigation. An operations department, which coordinates under its authority on route control centres, ACC, and airports, who together are in charge of the en route, approach, and aerodrome phases. The operations department may also include one or more centralised or offshore supervision centres, managing real-time availability of communication, navigation, surveillance, and aeronautical data processing services, and an Aeronautical Information Service, or AIS, for the use of pilots and air traffic controllers. 
An airport is part of an ANSP, as in the case of Euro Airport Basel Mulhouse. Answering to the Direction des Services de la Navigation Aérienne in France, or, as in Frankfurt Airport, answering to the DFS in Germany, or, as in Gatwick Airport in England, answering to NATS. In an airport, there are two essential departments dedicated to operational air traffic management the Air Traffic Control Department and the Technical Department. The Air Traffic Control Department, with its air traffic controllers, is in charge of all phases of departure and arrival of aircraft. The Technical Department is responsible for all systems and equipment relevant to safety. These systems and equipment provide communication services navigation services, surveillance services, and aeronautical data management services. 25 ATSEP are employed in the technical department of Euro Airport, compared with over 100 at Charles de Gaulle Airport, close to Paris, or Heathrow at London. Their activities are as follows. The management of surveillance systems, such as radar and management data processing systems such as computers and displays which provide information to air traffic controllers. Management of nav aids or telecommunication systems. Training. Engineering. Management of safety, quality and the service availability. The technical division of Basel Mulhouse is called the Local Maintenance Department. It is concerned only with local ground-based equipment and some cases in the surrounding area. System monitoring and control is carried out seven days a week by two certified ATSEP, one specialised in surveillance and ATM systems and the other one in nav aids and communication. Activities installation and non-operational maintenance are provided five days a week from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Let's turn now to a more detailed explanation of equipment managed by the technical department. Let's begin with the system used for air ground communication between air traffic controllers and pilots. Radio equipment is part of the main systems of aviation safety and it must always be available. On this diagram, you can see the radio system at Basel Mulhouse Centre, a local radio system which allows the flow of communication to be managed and routed to the correct controller. Above, we can see the operated radio stations which are represented by a microphone and a speaker. They are located in the control tower or in the approach room and are used by controllers allowing them to communicate with pilots in aircraft. When the controller presses the button push to talk on the microphone, the local radio communication system reroutes the voice to a collocated transmission reception unit which is usually located on the airport. Then, a transmitter broadcasts the communication on the frequency selected by the air traffic controller. This unit is used for both transmitting and receiving communications from and to aircraft. An airport may also guide aircraft located in the area of an adjacent airport, Dijon Airport in our case. Communications are routed from the local radio communication system to a remote antenna located near this airport. This routing can be operated by a telecom company. Technical departments of airports do not generally maintain these networks, which is managed by private companies. Being the most important system of aviation safety, the radio communication system of an airport 
contains one or more collocated transmission reception units. One of them is called backup and is located on the airport and sometimes on the control tower's roof. Another one might be located on a remote site. This is the case with the Grand Ballon site. It can also play the role of backup for one or more airports or en route control centres. Routing communications can also be managed by the ANSP's network or by a private telecom provider. The notion of double or triple backup systems is called redundancy. This is an essential factor in aviation safety and is applied to all implemented systems. Let's go on to equipment used for ground-ground voice communication between air traffic controllers in airports and en route control centres. Aircraft departing or arriving at an airport are guided by one or several en route control centres called ACC. The air traffic controllers of the different control centres and airports must be able to communicate through a reliable and safe system. As previously explained for radio communication systems, the phone system works on a similar principle. It manages the flow of communication. Above, we can see several phones located in the control tower or in the approach room connected to a local telecommunication system. The local telecommunication system then connects the communication to a switchboard which is connected to a dedicated telecommunication network managed by the ANSP or a private telecom provider or an IP network. Finally, at the output of this network, the call reaches its correct destination. As for radio communication, calls can be outgoing or incoming. The technical division is also responsible for equipment used for surveillance and allowing ATCO to guide aircraft in space and avoid mid-air collisions. The air traffic controller can monitor any aircraft in the area of control of the airport through a surveillance display called Surveillance HMI. Behind this interface, software allows for the combining of plots from different multiple sensors, such as radars or ADSB receivers. It allows to be combined several radar sensors in order to enhance accuracy and reliability. This software is called SDPS, or Surveillance Data Processing System. Now we will detail the kinds of radars used by an airport. First of all, we might see a primary surveillance radar, PSR. This kind of radar is able to detect any aircraft by the reflection of a microwave against the fuselage, wings, engine or tail. Actually, it can detect any ferric structure flying within range of 80 nautical miles. Also, there may be one or several remote secondary radars or ADSB equipment, which are not necessarily managed by the technical division, but by other services in the ANSP. These systems detect and locate all aircraft equipped with a transponder via a communication protocol. Included in the SDPS is a set of safety net software, which reports through information displayed to air traffic controllers, such as the short-term conflict alert, which is a proximity between two aircraft, the minimum safety altitude warning, which is the proximity with the ground, and the area prohibited warning, which is the proximity with a prohibited zone, such as a military area. An airport may also have ground radar, an SMR or surface movement radar, 
which is not necessarily coupled with other radar sensors. This radar has a specific screen use. As the primary surveillance radar, it detects any iron structure on the airport, such as cars, trucks and, of course, aircraft. Turning now to NAVAID systems, used for guiding aircraft in the various phases of flight. First, there is the ILS instrument. ILS is the instrument landing system, which offers the pilot a guide during landing phases. An airport may have two ILS on a runway, one at each end, allowing its use from either direction, depending on the prevailing wind. ILS actually allows aircraft to be fully guided into the runway for landing. It is made up of a set of three instruments, the glide path, a localizer, and the DME. The glide slope allows the aircraft to be guided on a descent angle relative to the horizontal. The localizer is in charge of giving the aircraft the offsets in comparison to the centerline of the runway. DME, for Distance Measure Equipment, is a system for determining the distance between the aircraft and the ground station. The principle is simple. The DME measures the time taken to send a pulse signal back and forth between the aircraft and the DME. Localizer, glide slope and DME information are displayed in the cockpit for the pilot. There is also the VOR DME. VOR DME are a couple of instruments located in the same shelter. They are used as a navigation system by the pilots. VOR, for VHF Omnidirectional Range, is a system for determining a magnetic bearing that corresponds to the angle of a ray relative to the magnetic north. This information is then used to know the radial on which the aircraft is fixed. More generally, VOR gives information allowing pilots to follow any route passing through the beacon. It may also be coupled with a DME as shown above to give the distance from the beacon. In the same way, the information of the VOR and DME are displayed in the cockpit. Now let's go on to the system which manages flight plans. When a pilot wants to make a flight, he submits a flight plan using a dedicated interface, which specifies the airport departure and arrival, the type of aircraft, the transit beacons with their associated times, and any other information which characterises the flight. A computer, called FDPS, for Flight Data Processing System, will compute the flight, taking into account the pilot's requests and all other flight information. This system, generally centralised, will send all flight information to the various en route control centres and airports potentially concerned. In our example, information arrives at Basel Mulhouse Airport on an ATM data management system. Then this system transmits data in real time to the appropriate controller in the tower or the IFR room, depending on the phase of flight. The information is presented to the controller either on a screen or on a small sheet of paper called a strip. The technical division is also responsible for networks. All equipment at Basel Platform is interconnected by a network called LAN, or the Local Area Network. This safety and security network allows all systems to exchange operational data. Similarly, to exchange the same kind of data between all ATM services in France and foreign countries, another type of network called WAN for Wide Area Network is maintained by the technical service of the ANSP 
or by a telecommunications operator. Now let's move on to energy facilities. As you have seen throughout the presentation, all the systems and equipment are very important for safety during flying activities. The energy used to power them is also very important to aviation safety. The technical division uses several systems for securing the electricity supply, such as generators or inverters located in the airport. The technical division is also responsible for batteries, supplying 24 or 48 volts for the different CNS ATM systems and equipment. We can also see equipment used to record all conversations and data for replay or analysis. Regulations require the mandatory recording of all data and the stockage of all air traffic service activities, including ATCO and ATSEP vocal exchanges. On an airport, two systems record information. The first one, which records radio or telephone communications, is called the voice recorder, and the other, stocking all radar surveillance data, is called the data recorder. In the case of any problems or safety incidents, this data can be sourced and reviewed to analyse what kind of event has occurred. It then can be used to recommend procedures which can improve the future level of safety. This is also one of the main uses of the safety management system. Even with all this equipment, human error is always possible. Thorough training is therefore mandatory in order to mitigate the impact of any non-routine situation. The control simulator is regularly used by air traffic controllers to maintain their skills base or for training on new control situations. The principle is very simple. One or two air traffic controllers play their own role, while one to four people play the role of the pilots. This training tool is able to simulate, through established scenarios, radar imagery, radio and phone calls, any normal or new situations, and also unusual or critical events. This training tool is essential. It allows us to guarantee the competence of all air traffic controllers. It needs to be maintained in excellent working condition, as well as all the other operational equipment, as it too helps to maintain an optimal level of aviation safety. After this presentation, based on a French environment example, it is now up to you to make the links with your own working environment, not only administrative, but also to your technical environment. I encourage you to list and describe the different services in the ANSP you depend on. How about also listing the various systems and equipment, both CNS and ATM, managed by the technical services you depend on? And finally, how can you now see your own position within this environment of security? and quality of human and technical interface.